Hello, my friends. Welcome to another global pop episode of 30 Albums for 30 Years. I am your host, Jay Sweet. I'm excited to present to you today the music of Spain and flamenco music. Let's get into it. As I'm sure you can imagine, the history of Spain is long and it is complex. The Iberians, the Celts, the Basque, the Phoenicians, the Greeks, and the Carthaginians were early inhabitants of Spain. The Romans then conquered the Iberian Peninsula, incorporating it into the Roman Empire as Hispania, and this period saw the development of infrastructure and urbanization. Then came the Visigoths, and in 711 AD, the Muslims. Muslim rule brought significant advances in science, culture, and architecture. The Christians then gradually pushed the Muslim wars out of Spain. The Christian rule culminated with the capture of Granada in 1492 by the Catholic monarchs. This marked the beginning of a united Spain under the Catholic monarchy, and they funded Christopher Columbus's journeys to the New World. Spanish exploration and colonization of the Americas in the late 15th and early 16th century established it as a global superpower. The Spanish Empire became one of the largest and most influential empires in history, with territories that ranged throughout the Americas, Europe, Asia, and Africa. In the early 19th century, Spain was occupied by French troops, and then Spain lost most of its American colonies in the 19th century, which had gained independence through a series of revolutions. The Spanish Civil War, which lasted from 1936 through 1939, was a brutal conflict between the Republican government and the nationalist forces led by General Francisco Franco. Franco's nationalists emerged victorious, and he ruled as a dictator until his death in 1975. After Franco's death, Spain transitioned to a democracy. The 1978 Constitution established a parliamentary monarchy. Spain has since become a democratic and economically developed nation, joining the European Union in 1986. The innovation and usage of the guitar has really changed the trajectory of popular music. Now, there were plucked string instruments way before the guitar, known as lutes, L-U-T-E-S. But the guitar, as we know it, first came to appear in Spain around the turn of the 15th century. Joaquin Rodrigo, born in 1901, lives through 1999, is a noted Spanish composer and virtuosic pianist who is known for writing some of the finest early music for Spanish classical guitar repertoire. Born in Valencia, Rodrigo lost his eyesight after contracting an eye infection. He then studied music in Paris, and he began publishing compositions in 1923. He released his most famous work, the work we're going to discuss today, Concerto de Arenas. So let's get into that. That was 1939. Concerto de Arenas. Concerto de Arenas was composed in 1939 in Paris. The first movement was supposedly inspired by the beautiful gardens at the Royal Palace of Arenas. In her autobiography, Rodrigo's wife, Victoria, who was a skilled Turkish pianist, a very fine musician, declares that the second movement was both an evocation of the happy days of their honeymoon and a response to Rodrigo's devastation at the miscarriage of their first pregnancy. Here we were going to listen to the second movement. This is the Adagio slow movement. And as you can imagine, the piece begins rather hauntingly. The movement showcases subtle dynamic changes and consistent orchestral shifts throughout. Overall, it resembles the subtleties of the French Impressionistic movement 
or music that was taking place around the same time, which is very much focused on such subtleties. Take notice of the impressive guitar runs and strumming techniques played by Paco de Lucia. That's the version we're going to hear today. We will learn more about de Lucia as the program continues. If you like this version and you like this piece, I highly recommend that you check out Miles Davis's and Gil Evans's interpretation of the same work on the album Sketches of Spain, which was released in 1960. Without further ado, let's enjoy Concerto de Arnes Movement No. 2. Probably the most celebrated of all Spanish musics is flamenco music, which is heavily connected to southern Spain and has a rich and complex and fascinating history. Here's an overview. Ancient roots, approximately 800 AD to 14 AD, there are elements of Arabic, Jewish, Romanian music, which likely played a role in shaping early flamenco music. And then when we have the Moorish influence, 711 AD to 1492 AD, that also significantly shaped the style of music that was being played in the area. Then what we have is what's known as gypsy contribution. Now, gypsy is considered a pejorative term. We don't use it as much anymore, but basically nomadic people. This is around 15th to 18th century. The nomadic people arrived in Spain during that time, and they played a crucial role in shaping the sound of flamenco music. Their music and dance traditions merged with the existing styles, giving birth to a distinct Romani-influenced aspect of flamenco music. Now, the golden age of flamenco, 18th through 19th century, uh, began to take on a recognizable form. The period saw the emergence of various flamenco styles and the development of the guitar as a central instrument in the genre. Flamenco started to gain popularity throughout Spain and was played mostly in taverns and cafes. So flamenco music in the 20th century expanded beyond Spain with notable artists like Carmen Amaya and Sabicas. They introduced it to international audiences and then innovations in guitar playing, especially through the contributions of virtuosos like Paco de Lucia, who we're going to talk about, modernized the music while representing its traditional roots. Then we have what's known as flamenco fusion, which essentially just fuses elements of flamenco music with genres like jazz, rock, and Latin music. Also, Paco de Lucia was responsible for a lot of that, and a new style known as Nuevo Flamenco, New Flamenco, was formed. So let's unpack this all and uh, learn a little bit about uh, Paco de Lucia and his music. Paco de Lucia is widely regarded as one of the greatest flamenco guitarists of all time. A trailblazer in modernizing flamenco music, his innovative approach to guitar playing and collaborations with other musicians helped propel flamenco onto the international stage. Born in Spain in 1947, he was known for his fast playing and his innovative style. De Lucia's father was a flamenco guitarist and forced Paco to practice 12 hours a day. Before long, he was playing in the streets for money. De Lucia found a major influence in the well-known flamenco composer and guitarist Nino Ricardo. Paco De Lucia made his first recordings at the age of 14 and then toured with a flamenco troupe of dancers run by Jose Greco. Around this time, he traveled to the U.S. for the first time. His earliest recordings were more related to traditional flamenco. Throughout the late 1960s and much of the 1970s, he collaborated with singer Cameron de la Isla. In 1977, De Lucia married Casilda Varela. She was the daughter of a noted Spanish general, General Varela. During this time, De Lucia began to spread flamenco throughout the U.S. and Europe and met with many jazz and rock musicians during this period and began to blend those styles in a new kind of subgenre of flamenco known as Nuevo Flamenco. Moving into the 1980s, De Lucia formed a celebrated guitar trio with Larry Coriel and Al Di Miola and continued to work on many impressive projects. De Lucia died of a heart attack in 2014 while on holiday with his family in Mexico. 
they were playing soccer. Uh, he was playing soccer with his son on the beach. And then he asked his wife to take him to the hospital because he felt a strange coolness in his throat, he said. He was taken to the hospital, seemed okay, but then soon thereafter, he lost consciousness and died. His brother Pepe commented that De Lucia had quit a two-pack-a-day smoking habit only 20 days earlier and vowed to take up more sports activities, which basically killed him. Great musician, Paco De Lucia. Let's check out some of his music. Choosing a singular representative piece to showcase De Lucia's skills and music is not easy, so I went with the most downloaded piece, which is called Entre Dos Aguas, which means Between Two Waters, released in 1973. The song is recorded with a second guitarist, and that's De Lucia's brother, Ramon de Algeceres, along with a bass and bongo track played by Pepe Abano. Now, it took a while, but journalists and executives convinced the record companies to release this one as a single. The single sold 300,000 copies and went gold by 1976. Entre Dos Aguas is considered a flamenco masterpiece internationally. The song starts a little bit more subdued, but really picks up in the middle of the track. And Entre Dos Aguas is a perfect introduction to Lucia's compositional and playing style. Please enjoy Entre Dos Aguas between two waters. Tomatito is Jose Fernandez Torres, born in 1958. Another influential flamenco guitarist, Tomatito has a unique style that combines traditional flamenco with contemporary influences. He has worked with many renowned flamenco artists and musicians from various genres. Growing up in a musical family, he began playing clubs early on and was discovered by Paco De Lucia. And then he went on to work and record with De Lucia as well as Cameron De La Isla. Much of Tomateo's works blends flamenco music with jazz music. Here we are going to hear Pecio De Los Castaños, which comes from his 2010 record, Flamenco S. The track showcases Tomatito's brilliant playing and take notice of the hand claps, which are common in flamenco music. Please enjoy. Tomatito. Jose Monje Cruz is Cameron de la Isla, which means shrimp of the island. De la Isla was born in 1950. He is known for his powerful and emotional singing and is considered one of the most iconic figures in the history of flamenco. His collaborations with Paco de Licia are legendary. De la Isla was born in Cadiz, Spain into a Spanish Romani family. His mother was a wandering Roma basket weaver who was a strong singer. His father was a blacksmith who could also sing well. When his father died when De La Isla was very young, he began to sing at bars and bus stops to earn money for the family. In the late 1960s, he met Paco De Lucia, and the two legends began recording together. In 1992, the hard-living singer died of lung cancer at only 41. 100,000 people attended his funeral. For our track, we decided to choose Como El Agua, Like Water. It's the title track of the album of the same name, 1981 release, and it features three legends, De La Isla, Paco De Lucia, and Tomatito. Hearing the three masters work together is a real treat, and De La Isla's impassioned vocal style are in full display here. The lyrics translate to the following. Divine light of my heart, illuminating my heart, my body walks cheerfully because... It's carrying your illusion like water, like water, like clear water running down from the mountain. I want to see you day and night like water, like water, like water. I want all of your warmth. My body is yours. If you want, we both have fire running in our blood. Oh, like water, like water, like water. If your eyes were green olive all night long, I would be crushing 
all night. I would be crushing, crushing, crushing. He says it a bunch of times. Like water, like water, like water. Let's take a listen. Como el agua, like water. Vincente Amigo, born in 1967, is another virtuosic guitarist and composer who is celebrated for his technical prowess and innovative compositions. He is known for pushing the boundaries of flamenco music. He was raised in Cordoba, began guitar lessons early on, and began recording regularly in the 1990s. Tres notas para decir te quiero means three notes to say I love you. That's the song we're going to enjoy and check out Amigo's skills in blending flamenco music with more pop jazz styles. This track comes from the album Ciudad de las Ideas, which is City of Ideas. It's an album released by Amigo in 2000, and it earned him a Latin Grammy Award, nomination for Album of the Year, and one Best Flamenco Album. Check him out, Vincente Amigo. Estrella Morant is a prominent flamenco singer known for her powerful and emotive performances. Born in 1980, Morant comes from a family with a strong flamenco tradition. She began singing with her father when she was seven. She made her professional debut when she was 16 and has never looked back. Morant has been recording regularly since the early 2000s. We are going to check out her track, Volver, which means to return. It has 21 million downloads on Spotify alone. Here you will hear Moran singing along with some fantastic guitar work and of course hand claps. The lyrics translate to the following. Of the light that is in the distance mark my return. They are the same lights that enlightened with their pale reflection deep hours of pain. And although I didn't want to return, one always returns to their first love, the old street where the echo said, your life is your own. Your loving is your own, under the mocking gaze of the stars. That with indifference. See me return today, returning with a wrinkled forehead. The snows of time have silvered my temples, feeling that life passes like the wind, that 20 years is nothing, that feverish gaze wandering in the shadows. It looks for you. It names you. Living with my soul gripping a sweet memory I cry once again. Estrella Warrant Valver to return. Formed in 1978, the Gypsy Kings started in France as a traveling family band, but were raised around Spanish culture and were important in bringing pop-oriented flamenco music to international audiences. It was the group's third album from 1987, which spent 40 weeks on the U.S. charts. That's their self-titled release. While sometimes criticized by flamenco purists for their pop blending, the Gypsy Kings are instrumental in popularizing flamenco music internationally for sure. Bamboleo is a 1987 hit by the Gypsy Kings. The song is written by the band members and Venezuelan composer Simon Diaz. Bamboleo can be translated to wobble or swing. The song's refrain translates to the following, swaying, swaying, because I prefer to live my life in this way. Gypsy Kings, Bamboleo, let's enjoy. All right, my friends, there you have it. There is a brief overview of Spanish music, Spanish culture, and flamenco music as well. I hope you enjoyed today's program. I hope you continue to keep listening for all things regarding the podcast. You can go to 30 albums for 30 yearscom Let's keep this music alive. Have a wonderful day. Peace. <laughs>